welcome to Brian Breaks Character. Today, well, this is my birthday week. Uh, we're recording this a little earlier than my birthday, but the date that it comes out is right before my birthday. My birthday is January 12th, and I don't know what you're like around birthdays, but I was getting to thinking, um, you know, I don't have a lot of hangups around my birthday at all, but I was getting to thinking around what does it mean to birth something, and what does it mean to um, put something into the world, and I, and I know that coming right off of Christmas, for those of you who know the story of Christmas and who doesn't, you know, it's the story of being, you know, immaculately uh, pregnant with some big idea, uh, right? That's the metaphysical meaning of Christmas is that you are given by the divine some big idea that you're meant to birth. And so on my birthday, I wanted to unhash a little bit of this and to really bring to you some of my non-denominal non-denominational reverend background into a conversation around purpose and desire. So it's just me. It's just you and me on this podcast today. Um, and so I wanted to take a chance here to share a little bit of my beliefs around what it means to hatch, to birth the big idea, to say yes to your purpose um, in all the different facets of what that means. Because I know there's a lot of talk in the world and the zeitgeist around purpose and follow your purpose. And I, and I wanted to get a little more specific today around listening to that. Um, and maybe you have a really clear sense of what that is, or, or if you're like most people, maybe you have a real sense of like, maybe I've got more than one, or maybe there's another one that's kind of trying to hatch and you're trying to shut it up. So I wanted to talk about that today. So let me start with a little background. So as a non-denominational reverend, I was trained in, the, in A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles is no religion. There's no dogma. There's no doctrine. Uh, it uses uh, Christian themes and stories to teach uh, the spiritual truths that are true of every single religion in the world. Uh, so while you don't have to be any religion to agree that being kind is, I think, the definition of spirituality. Uh, and so using that thought, I'm going to pull on a lot of different parts of my background to share one of the ways that I think you might embrace your purpose more deeply or be open to a shift in your mindset around that. So yeah, some of you may know this is an Ignatian way of looking at the world. So St. Ignatius was long time ago, the way that he was having his relationship with God, blah, 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 whatever God, universe, whatever word you want to use here. But the Ignatian way, this what, what came from the Ignatian way of looking at the world is that desire is one of the ways that the universe organizes itself. So let me say that a, a, in a more practical way. So your parents desire for each other and then their desire to have a child possibly is why you're in the world, right? Your desire to let's Let's speak to my actors for a moment here to pursue acting at a high level, at the highest levels of the art form might be why you're living in London right now, or you're living in Los Angeles, or you're living in New York City or Atlanta, or one of the bigger meccas for acting in the world, because you want to be acting at that level and at that level of consciousness, because you believe art at its highest purpose is shifting the consciousness of the planet, right? That might be a deep belief inside of you or that you believe that's where you can have the most impact. Now, if you grew up in Topeka or Cleveland like myself, what are you doing living in LA? Well, you're living in LA because that is where it is possible. So that desire to express your purpose at that level helped you or directed you or led you to live in Los Angeles. And I just want to take a moment here to like take, I'm going to zoom out for a moment and think about the spiritual gift or certainty that you can take from, oh, I live in Los Angeles because that is on the path toward fulfilling my purpose, or that is part of me truly fulfilling my purpose. It's a lot different than just, I need to move to LA because that's where the work is, right? Um, so I think that's one that you can probably grasp onto right away. Another one, I want to also, you know, using this Ignatian way of looking at the world is your desire to go get a Subway sandwich for lunch today uh, is going to put you in on the subway, taking the subway to 34th Street, and you're going to pass that person on the street. And you're going to say hello to that shop, you know, that person, that sandwich, what do they call the people at Subway? Sandwich magicians? I don't know what they call sandwich something, artisans or something, sandwich artist, right? You're going to talk to that sandwich artist making your sandwich. Uh, and you're going to 
walk from there and pass someone on the street. And through all of that, if you believe in a constantly conspiring universe that is working towards its greatest good at all given times, your desire is why you interacted with those people, why you're on that street in that moment, why so many of us believe in signs that you are open to or available to the signs or the goodness that can come your way. So that is kind of the Ignatian way like of like, I'm listening to my desire. And what you and I both know is this can be a, a double-edged sword, right? So oof, you can feel like, oh, I guess I got to move to LA because that's where the most work is and, that, and like I want to have my purpose. And so we have to be really mindful of relating to this voice with an embrace, I would say. You know, my mom was just here visiting for Christmas, and I'm sure anybody can relate to this, is when you are with family, all the old stuff can come up. And my mom and I have a great relationship, but still... I could relate to her as, mom, don't do that, brother, don't bug me, but, but, but we can relate to the voice of the universe or this intelligence that we're given. I know that sometimes it doesn't always come in a form of a voice, but we can relate to it as, oh, damn it, do I have to? Or really? Or we can bring some curiosity to it and say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm meant to be doing this. And so why I think this is so important for everyone and why I think it is so important for us to take a moment to take stock around desire and around purpose is if we can believe that desire is planted in us by the universe, it is then what is going to create the most perfect expression of your life and of the time that you have on this planet. So again, it's my birthday, right? So this is kind of connecting back to that, drawing back to that. So if, even if you think it is a miracle of bazillion, gazillion proportions that you and I are on this planet at the same time, unless someone's listening to this podcast after I'm dead. And so if you are, praise be. But I'm just saying, for you and I to be here at the same time and it even being possible that we can connect in this way through the headphones or in the car, if you're listening, wherever you're listening, that we have the possibility to do that. And we're here at the planet at the same time. That alone is a miracle. And so if we believe we're both here to see the best unfolding of this planet and for the people who are here, for all the sentient beings that are here, then we want to be so in touch with this desire and allow to percolate the things that are meant to, to be birthed right? Why do you think there's no room at the inn? There's no room at the inn because you have this conversation with yourself. You have to go, oh, I, I'm not, I'm going to, it's earthly. It is in the manger, right? It's with the animals and the dirt and the manure. It's like, it's earthly. It's of the earth. You are on this planet for a reason, right? And this is whether you believe in the, the, the Christian storytelling or not, I'm using this analogy because I know you've heard this story, so kind of to, to use it that way. Why is it the immaculate conception? Because this idea that you're impregnated with is divine. It's beyond the earthly. It's where the two are coming together, right? Uh, I also believe that in the story, you know, Mary's not listened to anybody until an angel comes down and says, you're going to give birth to the big man. That's, gonna, that's what's going to be happening. And so the communication that you have around that thing that might be percolating or that thing that you already know about yourself is percolating. I was say percolating. Who's on the percolator? Mount up. I don't know why I'm saying that. Okay, anyway, the thing that's percol percol percolating for you might be, if you don't already know what it is, is meant to be a conversation you have with something greater than yourself. For some of us, that comes through yoga class. It might come through meditation. For some of us, for me, sometimes it comes through prayer or it can come through a walk where I'm just making spaciousness to hear. Sometimes we get answers right away. Sometimes they come a little bit more slowly. But one of the things I know where a lot of us show up, it's that parental thing where we can think whatever information we're given from the beyond is unreasonable. We can say, no, you can't really want that from me. And so I'm going to use my own story a little bit to help illustrate this. It's my birthday, so I can, I can tell a story about myself, right? So many of you will know that I was an actor for a long time. And I was successful. I made my living as an actor. I was very lucky in that way. I think that's, that's not something that I take for granted. Um, and as I was acting, I can remember I was on the set of the newsroom and Aaron Sorkin was there and we were, you know, working out the scene and talking to Alan Poole, the fabulous director. And like, you know, this is top of game kind of gig, right? I mean, it was a co-star that should have been a guest star. We're going to let that go. But like, this is like, I'm with the series regulars and John Gallagher. And like, it's like a, an amazing moment. And I just had a great time, but I left going, wait, that can't be all there is. And what was going on at the same time as me booking this was 
I was coaching creative people, mostly actors, on how to make their lives bigger, get more auditions, have great representation, all that stuff, but truly to believe in themselves and their own worthiness. And somehow, I was just feeling less than when I was on set. I wasn't getting that, that jolt, that you're in the right place at the right time vibes that I needed to have. Um, and so that is when things started to change inside of me. And I was able to go, oh, no, no, no. How dare you, universe? Of course, I was like, no. How dare you say to me, I want to be a coach more than be an actor? I've been an actor for 20 years, I think, maybe almost at that point, almost 20 years at that point. I made my living here. Like, I went to school for this. I went to Northwestern. I paid off my student loans for that. Like, I, I've learned this business. And I was re and I wrestled, and I would say I wrestled with it for not a very long time. I gratefully had the gift of, uh, of a friend. She's been on the podcast, actually, Sharon Friedman who said to me, what if you just give up acting for two weeks? In that two-week permission slip birthed or allowed me to say yes to, gave me the moment of going, wait, I'm allowed to be impregnated with this idea of just being a coach or in addition being a coach to being an actor. And if this is lighting up some parts of your brain right now, great. Don't walk away. Now could be the time you're wanting to like turn off this podcast because you don't want to get any other news because you're like, I got one purpose, Brian. I'm not trying to embrace two or I don't want to shift the way things are going right now, but I want you just to stay with me here. I get that there's no room at the end right now. It doesn't feel safe like there's a home for this idea. So make some space here to allow any intelligence you're getting this is the word I want you to use. It may feel unreasonable, but give yourself the space to consider it. Give yourself the permission is the word I'm trying to get to here. Give yourself permission to consider that what's being asked of you may be necessary, may be needed, may have more for you. I'm thinking specifically of a couple actors that I work with who are doing things other than acting. Now, I just want to make sure, wait, before we go into this, there is no need for you to have more than one purpose. Let's get clear on that. You might have one. It's big. It's bold. It's awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Please remember that it is your purpose. It is not a mundane thing. Treat it sacredly. But I'm thinking of some actors that I know. One who's launching their coaching business, uh, like acting coaching, and another who is creating dance workshops. And both of them can wrestle with this idea of how much time am I allowed to give to that? Uh, what are the exact steps I should take to make this be profitable or lucrative or just be train, you know, teaching people in a great way and having the impact that I want it to have while I'm also trying to balance an acting career? And if that's, a, uh, if that's kind of where you're at right now, good. You are exactly in the – you're looking for the manger. That's where I want to be with you, right? I want to be with you looking for the manger. Um, but the question I want to give with you today to kind of leave you with, to get you started around this, right? Is I'm sure something here is already, hopefully something has sparked some ideas in you, but one way to get started with saying yes to your purpose or saying, be giving a bigger yes to the purpose you've already identified is to notice what delights you and what energizes you. Those two things, what delights me, what energizes me. So if you're not going to think about desire yet, sometimes desire might feel too big. So what delights me and what energizes me? I'll give you all an example. Before I record this podcast today, my boyfriend, uh, who's actually my fiance, um, uh, went and got some flowers at the flower market downtown LA. He brought them home and he left and he said, will you put those in some water? And I'm like, of course I'll put flowers in water. I feel like Miss Dalloway. I feel like fabulous, right? A Meryl Streep in the hours, right? So I'm cutting the flowers and putting them in the, in the vase. And in my mind... <laughs> This is giving you a lot of who I really am right now. I'm like having my own TV show, like telling you how to arrange flo flowers in this in this vase, right? And I'm like, and if you stick a plastic bag, it's a. I'll teach you all, right? Here's what happened on the here's what happened on Brian Pataka's talk show today. I was arranging these hydrangeas in this big vase that is opaque; you can't see through it. And I was like, the 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 there's not enough flowers for them to feel bunchy. And I go, oh, well, here's the trick that I like to use. You cut a plastic bag and you shove it around the stems so that the flowers will stay in the center of the vase, right? And I'm like having my own little talk show inside of my head. Well, I bet those of you listening, this has not come as a surprise to you because my way of being is an extrovert. My way of being is to narrate the actions that I'm taking. My way of being in my purpose is to open up the stories of what delights and excites me so that I can share that with my clients, right? 
So for you, so that was definitely a moment I was like, oh, this is delighting and energizing me. That's a moment I would identify. I want you to find those moments. Between now and the next podcast episode, just notice them for yourself. And here's what you're not allowed to do. Don't write any of them off. This is not an assignment for you to judge yourself. You might find, I really love chopping vegetables. That's it. I'm just going to write that down. Or you might put a note in your phone if that's going to make it easier for you. I highly encourage you to write these down because you'll find a theme or a pattern emerging because of this. And I don't think it's easy to find that if you're just thinking about it. I actually think it's way more helpful to write these things down. Okay? And then we'll use them to find like, what is this other thing being birthed? What's next? So this whole month, I'm going to be talking about the idea of birthing your big idea or saying more, saying a bigger yes to your purpose. So you're going to hear from me. I'm going to have a few guests on. And that's what we're going to be talking about the rest of the month. Now, if you're listening right now and you're already like, whoa, I've got something, Brian. I want to take this so much further and I know that I can't do it on my own or I'd love to have a community of highly engaged people around me who are, who are doing it in this way. Um, I'm very pleased and excited to announce that I am starting a mastermind group. It's an intimate group where we're going to be working on this exact journey with people who are birthing something big. Um, and if you're the person who's not sure what their idea is yet, you're also perfect for this group because that's the first thing we're going to work on, really articulating what your big idea is. So if this excites you, I encourage you to apply. Uh, just go to brianbreakscharacter.com backslash apply. Uh, and you'll walk, they'll walk you through a couple of questions to help you figure out if you're a fit. And then we'll set up a call. You and I will get on the call and we'll see, is this mastermind the next best step for you to really give birth to this? Allow me to show up with the manger, right? Like let's create a space where you can give birth to this thing on the earthly plane. So just remember what we're talking about is taking something from the divine, from the universe, from God, Oprah, Buddha, whatever you believe, and bringing it out to be to be on this planet because you believe or you have a little bit of a belief right now that it could make a difference. And that's what we're going to be doing inside of that mastermind. So I hope today kind of got you started thinking about what are you passionate about, what delights you, what energizes you, and make that little list to help us start here. And on a personal note, I just want to say, this is super vulnerable for me to share with you. Um, I think most of you know that I've worked with actors for a long time, and I love actors, and they have taught me so much, and they continue to teach me things and open my eyes every single day. And this conversation that I've been having in this podcast has continuously been around how do we identify, how do we allow an actor to identify themselves as bigger than just an actor, as the impact that creatives have on this planet? Um, and in the acting business, which we know is tough, it is especially hard to maintain the stamina around that. And so I just want to say on a personal level, thank you to, for listening to this conversation that I'm having with myself, with you, and for believing that there is a deep, deeper spiritual purpose to, to what you're doing on this planet uh, and on the planet that we all want to see. Um, until next time, be kind, be kind, be kind. I love you. Uh, and again, if this kind of conversation is exciting you, um, the application is at brianbreakscharacter.com backslash apply, and we'll set up a call uh, to figure out if this mastermind would be a great place for us to dream and scheme and put together a plan for what you really want to see uh, in 2023. All right. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You know, I always say I'll see you, but I mean, you know what I mean, right? Okay. See you then. Thank you.